Hi, I'm Marlene Harmon Wilcox, and I am your Ready, Set, Gold mentor. I am a track and field heptathlete, which consists of seven events, long jump, high jump, shot put, javelin, 100 meter hurdles, 200 meters, and the 800 meter run. And this is contested over two days with a point accumulation of all your marks and measurements. Today, I'm gonna talk about mind, mindset growth. In particularly, we're gonna talk about choice of thought. But first, I wanna tell you a little bit about myself. I am a member of the 1980 Olympic team. I am a part of the World Championship team. I, was, I made the Pan American team. I am a five-time NCAA Division II champion. I'm a two-time uh, Hall of Fame recipient, and I am the United States Congressional Medal honoree. Actually, I still hold the National High School pentathlon record set back in 1980. <laughs> but today we're gonna talk about growth mindset and uh, the choice of thought and the power of training that choice of thought and equally as important as training your skill set as an athlete or your physical strength. When I was nine years old, uh, I started running track and my parents quickly realized that I had a special talent. So they went out and they found one of the best coaches in the country for me to train under. And quickly, I succeeded. As an 11 year old, I won the national championships in the 50 meter hurdles. And I went on to win four more national championships by the age of 13. And uh, at the end of the year, the coach sat myself and my parents down and he said, you know, Marlene's a really good worker. She's dedicated, she's committed, but she's just not good enough to be a part of our program. I typically coach elite athletes and she just falls short. And you know, you could imagine, I just won a national championship and I've got one of the best coaches in the country sitting down telling me I'm not good enough. But he told me, you know what, Marlene, I'll tell you what, you can go ahead and come to practice, but I can't coach you. You can train along the better athletes. Obviously, going home, I was pretty devastated. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I definitely had a pity party, a good one. But I quickly realized the pity party was a dead end. And I, I changed my choice of thought. There it is, choice of thought. And instead of thinking devastation, I thought determination. So guess what? I not only showed up, but four years later, I made that Olympic team. I showed him. So again, choice of thought determined my destination. It determined my success. And so I challenge all of you to think about what your choice of thought is, because we're all in charge of our happiness, when we feel sad, when we feel courageous, fearless, determined, those are all choices of thoughts. So I challenge all of you to review what you think. And if you are having sometimes those choice of thoughts, like we all do, of negative thoughts that are getting in the way of your success, then I challenge you to change that thought, to have the courage to change that thought. Okay, so we just talked about growth mindset and choice of thought. So that's just one part of being an athlete. So now we're going to talk about getting started because I think the most important part of any athletic endeavor is the start. Because if you don't start, you have no game, you don't have anything to work on, and you have no end. You have no victory if you don't start. So I always think starting and warming up and preparing your body is the most important part of any athletic endeavor. And actually, it's probably the most important part of anything. Starting a new project, starting a new career. Hey, even starting your day. How do you guys start your day? So I start my day 
with three thoughts of gratitude. What are your three thoughts of gratitude? So let's get started. We're gonna work on warming up and we're gonna visit stretching, a little bit of stretching, dynamic and event specific warm up. So let's get started. All right guys, we're gonna get started because you know how I feel about the start. The start is the most important part of the competition, of the workout, of anything. So part of why we start is we get our blood flowing, we activate our muscles, and we wake up our central nervous system to move and to learn and to pattern movement. So we're gonna just start off with a simple jumping jacks. We're gonna do 10 reps. And we're gonna make sure that we're opening completely up and reaching to the sky and coming back down. So join me, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right, so we got our blood pumping. So now we're gonna start activating and waking up our upper body, working on our posture. So we're gonna do small circles. We're gonna start out at the sign. We're gonna do five circles, starting small, getting big, and we're gonna circle forward. And then we're going to do five circles, starting big, getting smaller, going backwards. So here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, and reverse for five, four, three, two, one. And now we're gonna close and open, and close and open. So we're working against being on those phones and on those computers. And for one more time, one and two. And now for your challenge, we're gonna do opposite arm rotations. Now this might be a little challenging, but stick with it because I promise you you're gonna learn. So we're gonna start at the bottom, both arms at the bottom, and we're gonna start with one arm going one way, the other one going the opposite, and we're gonna meet at the top. So we're going all the way up and then back down. So we're gonna do five of those. Four, three, two, one. And then we're gonna reverse for five, four, three, two, one. All right, so now our arms are getting ready to go. Now we're gonna work out and warm up the most important limb of a runner. And what I think of any sport is the foot. So we're gonna go ahead and sit down. And we're gonna work on positioning where we're either going to dorsiflex, where our toes completely pulled up, or we're gonna point where our toes completely extended. Dorsiflex, point. Dorsiflex, point, and we'll do it two more times. Dorsiflex, point. Dorsiflex, point. So now we're starting to tell our body and our feet how to move. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start stretching out the limbs and the tendons that attach to our foot, and we're going to also warm up our ankle. So we're gonna do this in what we call a down dog position. So we're gonna go on our hands and knees, and then we're gonna extend one leg, and then the other leg, and then we're gonna rock back and forth, stretching out that Achilles area and foot area underneath, back and forth for three, two, one, and then we're gonna go into ankle rotation. So we're gonna roll it one, two, three, four, five, one direction, and back. One, two, three, four, five, and on the other foot. One, two, three, four, five, and reverse. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so now our feet are pretty warmed up. We've activated our ankles. Now we're gonna activate our hips because when we're sprinting and we're running, our hips are very, very important in processing the force to the ground 
and distributing all of our force in the right direction. So we're gonna do some clamshells. Um, so we're gonna open and shut, we're gonna do some rotation. We're gonna work on our foot being dorsiflex, our posture being good, and we're gonna make sure that we have good range of motion. So we're gonna start off hands and knees. And we're just gonna open and shut. If you notice, my foot is dorsiflex. So we're gonna open, shut, open, shut. We're just going five times. Three, four, five. And now we're gonna rotate forward. So we're gonna open, we're gonna go to the front, touch that elbow, go back. Open to the front and back. Open to the front and back. So we got two more because we're just gonna do five rotations on each one of these exercises. All right, now we're going backwards. All right, so we're gonna pull it up, out, and back. Up, out, and back. Up, out, and back. And two more. Back, and last one, and back. Last one, we're gonna donkey kick. So we're gonna pull it all the way in, and we're gonna kick it all the way up. And pull it all the way in, and kick it all the way up. So we're doing that for three more times. Three, two, one. All right, so we finished one side. We gotta take care of the other side. So here we go, we're gonna go with this side down. So now that we're pros, we're gonna go with this side. So we're gonna open up, one, two. Make sure that toes dorsiflex, three, four, Five, we're gonna go ahead and rotate forward. Touch that elbow. Two, dorsiflex that toe. Three, four, five, and reverse. Four, five, four, three, two, one. And last exercise, we're donkey kicking. All right, so pull it all the way in, kick it all the way out. Pull it all the way in, kick it all the way out. Two. Three, four, five. Hey, good job. All right, so now we've activated our hips. Now we're gonna go into a dynamic movement and start really getting that body ready to run. Not only ready to run, but ready to run fast. So we're gonna start off by stretching our hamstring in a dynamic way, opening up our shoulders. So we're gonna scoop our hands all the way up to the sky. We're gonna jam that heel to the ground, activating that hamstring and scooping down. And when we scoop down, we're gonna pull that heel back. So that's one. We'll go five times. Two, three, four, five. All right, you know the routine. Let's get to the other leg. So we're gonna go ahead and jam that heel in, straight up with our body, hands to the sky, and we're gonna scoop. One, two, pulling back when you get to the bottom. Three, four, five. All right, good job. So the next exercise we're gonna do is we're gonna work on activating our glutes, not just our lower hamstrings, but our glutes. So we're gonna grab our quad, we're gonna dorsiflex our toe. We're gonna stand up tall and we're gonna just squeeze that leg. And we're gonna squeeze the other one. Now there's a trick, we're gonna hold it out. Good job, hold it out, good job. Now we're gonna cross our body. Hey, look, you can use this arm for balance, right? So we're gonna cross our body. So we know the routine, let's add a little speed to it. So it's one. Two, three, four, five, six. One more round. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's some dynamic movement. Next, what we're gonna do is called a quad stretch. But we wanna make sure that we're opening up our body and our hip flexors. So we're not just gonna stretch our quads, we're gonna stretch, stretch our hip flexors. So the way we're gonna do it again, again, stretching up tall, hand to the sky, opposite leg, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna grab that quad, all right? And you're gonna just pull up and step down. And pull up and step down. So we'll go three more 
rounds. That's one. This is two. Stretching up. This is three. All right. All right, so this is our, our dynamic warm-up. Last one in our dynamic warm-up is we're gonna do side-to-side -side lunges. And this is just gonna get into the meat and potatoes of your legs, your core, and it's going to start activating your balance. So we're gonna step out wide, and we're just gonna bend over that right leg, and then stand up and bend over. Now you can touch that toe. This arm can come up for balance and stand up. So we're gonna go six times, three on each side. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. So the reason why we do this, it's called a dynamic warm-up. So we're activating the body. We're not static stretching. Static stretching is when you hold it. We're doing a movement of stretches. And this way, our body is getting ready to perform. So now we're gonna go into a little bit of running, a little bit of sprint warm up, because we all wanna be fast. I know I wanna be fast. Um, so we're gonna go into um, just a regular skip, just to kind of get that body ready to go. And so when you can skip in place, right? You can skip in place, right? It's not that hard. Nice and loose. Okay, so now that we skipped in place, now we're gonna start engaging the whole body. We're all loosey-goosey, and now we're gonna start reeling it in, and we're gonna start telling our body to start activating and moving quickly. So we're gonna start with an A skip series. So we're gonna start slow, and then we're gonna add speed to it and show you how it's done. So you're gonna hold up that right knee, Left arm, opposite arm comes up. We're gonna dorsiflex that toe, and we're gonna stay really tall, and we're gonna hop. Then we can put that foot down. Now we're gonna lift the next leg up, the left leg, and hop, and put it down. Hop, put it down, hop, put it down, and now we're gonna go, we're gonna add a little bit of speed to it, and it looks like this. And we're pulling that toe up, and we're pounding the ground. And look at my arms. Hey, they're coming along for the ride too, right? We gotta activate those arms. So this is A skip. So now I'm gonna throw a little different thing into it. We're gonna call it B skip. So instead of just lifting that leg up and stepping it down, we're gonna open it up and step it back down. All right, you guys ready? All right, so this is what it looks like. We're gonna hop out, back down, hop, out, back down. So it looks like this. So now this is like extending your stride and coming back to ground zero. Good job. All right. So now we're starting to get faster. Now we want to activate that fast twitch fiber. And you can do this in place. You don't have to go off sprinting for miles. You can actually activate your fast twitch fibers in place. This is a good exercise. We call these thigh pops. So we're gonna actually pull, we're gonna keep our legs kind of straight. We're gonna pull that dorsiflex that toe by pulling it up and we're gonna crack it back down at the ground. We're gonna engage our core, work on our posture and activate our arms. And it looks something like this. Can you go for 10 seconds? Time it. I got five, four, Three, can you go faster? Two, one. Good job. All right, so last exercise to get you ready for speed is we're gonna work on driving our leg down because we know that the more force we apply to the ground, the faster we go. In fact, Usain Bolt applies 1,000 pounds of force to the ground every step he runs at 100 meters. Yes, 1,000 pounds of force. And that's why he's able to run so fast. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to do this. And so we're gonna lift that leg up and we're gonna drive it down. We're gonna drive it down so hard that it's gonna pop us up in the air. 
We're gonna use this arm to start the movement. So we're gonna pull up and drive down. And we're gonna pull up and drive down. And we're gonna pull up, we'll go two more times. And we're gonna pull up, drive down, pull up, drive down. Okay, we gotta start with the other leg now too. Ready? Pull up, drive down, pull up, drive down, pull up, drive down, pull up, drive down. Last one, pull up, drive down. All right, I'm telling you guys, this is it. It's time to go fast. It's time to be in life of the fast lane. Now that I've taught you how to sprint, I want to expect all of you running faster. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for allowing me to be a part of your Ready, Set, Gold mentorship. It's been an honor and a privilege. And I hope that what we've covered, you can use it playing forward. I hope you can learn from the speed and apply it. And I want to do a special shout out to the Dignity Health Sports Park and the Galaxy Park for allowing us to use their beautiful facility. Thank you again. And a special thanks to the Foundation for Global Sports Development and Sidewinder Films. Thank you again.